Return to Wake Robin, One Cabin in the Heyday of Northwoods Resorts, written by Marnie O. Meminga, narrated by Susan Sweeney. Get up! Get up! My mother whispers. My eyes flash open. Confusion clouds my brain. Where am I? Is something wrong? I quickly look around. I'm sandwiched between frayed woolen blankets and the sagging mattress of an old metal bed on the porch of our family log cabin, looking almost exactly as it did when my grandparents built it in 1929. It sits high on a hill, surrounded by the pine and musty fragrance of the woods. Through sleepy eyelids, I take in the green porch swing, the birch-legged table, and the smoky glass of the kerosene lantern reflecting the stillness of the lake below. Having escaped the steamy cornland of my home for a few summer weeks, I believe I'm in heaven on earth. My face luxuriates in the coolness of the early morning air. I relax and curl deeper beneath the blanket's warmth. Get up, my mother's voice whispers again. You must come now. The sunrise is simply glorious. The sunrise? Get up to see the sunrise? Who's she kidding? The last thing this 14-year-old wants to do is leave a warm bed to go out to see a sunrise, glorious or otherwise. It's 5 a.m. and it's freezing out there. Hurry, my mother urges. Being careful not to let the screen door slam, She sets off down the 49 log steps at a determined rate of speed to the lake below. In the twin bed opposite me, my 17-year-old sister Nancy stirs. She pushes back the covers and plops to the floor. Not to be outdone, I make a supreme effort and struggle out of bed as well. In our thin cotton nighties, we grab our father's World War II pea-green army blankets from the ends of our beds and wrap them tightly around our shoulders. As our bare feet touch the cold porch floor, we are thunderbolted awake. Our pace quickens. One of us misses catching the screen door. It slams. Like a couple of water bugs hopscotching across the lake to avoid fish jaws, we gingerly pick our way over the slippery rocks and prickly pine needles down the 49 dew-covered log steps to the shore. When we feel we've saved our feet from any horny toads or big black spiders that might be crazy enough to be up this early, we catch our breath and look up. Our mother's silhouette is outlined against a golden dawn the first light catching the soft red of her hair. She's right. It is a glorious sunrise. Across the lake, a sliver of the most splendid red crests the top of the shattered forest. Hues of lavender, rose, and amber begin to pulsate into the sky like a kaleidoscope. High above in the pale blueness, A lone star still sparkles. Silver mist rises gently from the smoothness of the lake. All is still. In the sacred silence, my mother, sister, and I stand reverently together against a backdrop of tall pine and watch the magic of dawn unfold. Suddenly, the curve of a brilliant sun bursts through the dark forest. The world begins to awaken. We watch a blue heron lift up from a distant shore and gently fan its way over the still waters. Two ducks make a rippled landing near our dock while a black-and-white beauty, a loon, skims along the edge of a nearby island, hunting for its morning meal. Breathing in the chill air, the three of us draw our blankets closer. The gentle hues of the sunrise turn into the brightness of a new day, and the last star fades. My sister and I take one more look, race up the steps, and jump into our beds to grab a few more hours of sleep. My mother is more reluctant to leave the sunrise's amphitheater. From the renewed warmth of my bed, 
It's a while longer before I hear her reach the top step and gently close the porch door.